Welcome back to The Ref Show, Offside. Can it honestly get any more complicated than it is? I think it has just become more complicated. <laughs> uh, the impossible has been achieved. Uh, Glenn Turner is the expert on the subject, former uh, World Cup assistant referee with uh, Mark House, who's got strong views as ever. We will also come in this uh, part to uh, an interesting and, and very good comeback in the end of the Premier League for Keith Stroud mm. and a lesson here for all referees about how to get to the right call in the end. But first of all, the offside interpretation. Well, just Mark, just briefly you, people are saying this is a new offside law, but, but it's actually not. It's not. There's been no change to the offside law. There's been no change whatsoever. It's just we've interpreted it differently for our leagues to anybody else. I mean, I know that FIFA wrote to the FA to, to tell the PGML and the Premier League to, and, the, and the Football League to get their act in order, to bring it in line with what everybody else is doing. So it's all about interpretation. We've been interpreting it wrongly, and that's why we've got all the confusion. Uh, am I correct, Glenn? Absolutely correct, Mike. The, a, a question I often get asked is, Glenn, what's the difference between running the line and refereeing? And I say the major difference is the decisions made from the line are based upon fact. Yeah. Somebody is either onside or offside. The ball either went out of play or stayed in play. Whereas referees, interpretation of a foul, in my opinion, it was. In my opinion, it wasn't. The, the game on the line is largely down based upon fact. The game in the middle is more loosely dependent upon interpretation of law. Now, why are we in this country continually, rightly accused of making the offside law so complicated? It is not a complicated law, Alan. No, if it was, I wouldn't have run the line, because I'm only a simple lad from Bowles of you know. Well, I <laughs> say, when his flag went up for us, I blew my whistle, <laughs> end of. <laughs> we we overcomplicate things in this country. Um, um, and, and if that's correct, what Mark said, that FIFA have instructed our, uh, our federation. Uh, federation to sort things out, well then long overdue that has been. Yeah. We continue to complicate what is a simple law. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. So my intro was completely wrong there about <laughs> overcomplicating because I get confused as a sim an even simpler than you member right. of the media. You're right. It's overcomplicated. It we've overcomplicated okay. it in this country. Because we we've, we've put our own interpretation yeah. just to see more goals. And it's, it's just added confusion to the players, the managers, the coaches, yeah. the spectators, the media like you, Alan. Well, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, particularly us. Never mind anybody. I was a referee. When I, when I was refereeing, I didn't know. I, I was confused. Oh, I've got to tell you, some of these lads on the line, they look confused. One referee who remained nameless did tell me a couple of years ago, I'm not sure I understand the offside law, he said. Now, you clearly do. If you had a wish, you two, how would you go back to offside simply being, if you're offside, you're offside, uh, regardless of whether you're out on the right wing? No, no, no. No, I think that is too think, far a step yes, backwards. I think the way we've got it now, I think, is, is, is right. Yes. I think it's, it's right. Interpreted correctly, like it has been across Europe and the world. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with the, the FIFA and UEFA instructions regarding offside. I think no. they are perfect. perfect. The, the perfect. difficulties are in England yes. and with the English Premier League... And, 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 and below. Yeah. Um, we are overcomplicating a simple law. Yeah. And, and if, we con if we continue with the FIFA and UEFA mandate no. directive of doing it, there is no problem. Do you see any problem in the Champions League? Do you see any problem in the Europa League? You never get any problem, do you? No, no you no. don't, because it's simple. No. And now that, now that FIFA have written to uh, the English Federation and then they've sort of spoken to the PGMOL, it's hopefully now we'll start seeing more consistency with, with offside. The, the problem for me, Alan, is again, and we, we can highlight this, is why two rounds into the new season is the PGMO issuing an in, a, a clarification of offside? Shouldn't that have been sorted out before we kicked the ball? Well, you're talking, you know, you're issuing it a clarification. They speak to all the clubs before the start of the season. And it's there, you've got your law, but it's, in, it's, it's there in, in the laws like, of the game. Like Eddie Howe said, I thought we had this sorted out when we met pre-season. Right. Two weeks in, they're issuing clarification. Well, I certainly didn't understand that the Premier League had a week after the Liverpool-Bournemouth incident and chose last Friday to release yeah. Yeah. this on the eve of another round yeah. of fixtures that could have been done on yeah. the kind of Tuesday morning. Are they trying to bury bad news? I don't know. I don't know. But certainly, it. if you went back to offside as it was when I was a kid, no. you'd see loads of great goals, not yeah, count, because right. somebody was yeah. loitering. We don't want that, because it's, it, football is an entertainment business, and, and spectators pay a lot of money to go and watch Premier League football. 
But and it's, and it's all about entertaining. It's all about goals. That's what people pay their money. They want to see great goals, great players. And listen, we've got a fantastic product. The Premier League is a fantastic product. And, that, and, and let's keep it that way. And there's the offside, let's keep it simple and keep it how it should be. But it's clear that if somebody offside is t trying to play the ball or influence the outcome, should then we, that's the offside. It should go up, that, just like it should have at Liverpool. Yeah. We, all, we all, I think everybody agrees on that now, and yeah. I'm sure Harry Leonard in, in but, only looks but, back but, on that. Some sympathy for Harry Leonard, Glenn. You know, you've been there. No, that was, that was, an, easy, that was an easy one. If I, you know, that, that was an easy decision to make. You know, but, but going... Well, I suppose you look at that. You see, you sympathy, could, of, could, course, of course. I feel, I feel sympathy. Look, he's, he's, doing what, he's doing something that I did for a very long time and love doing. I have sympathy for anybody who gets something wrong. None of us go out there with the intention of getting something wrong because we love being criticised. Nobody wants, no. does that. So, of course, I have sympathy with the lad. What I don't have is an understanding of why he got such a straightforward decision incorrect. But going back, if that was last season... He would have been correcting, not flagging, <laughs> under the interpretation of the PGMOL. Which, which was the wrong interpretation. Which was the wrong interpretation. <laughs> Am I right? Am so I wrong? who's created the confusion? Who's created it? All right. And, and certainly, I know you guys are mystified that pre-season the emphasis was on the technical area rather than, for instance, on... There's, there's not a problem. Yeah, there's why. There's not a problem with our technical area. I think it's... Now, at the moment, I think the technical areas in, in, in most football, in the Premier League, in the Football League, is, is the behaviour, is, I think, is, is second to none. You only get, you get, you get, the, odd, you get the odd incidents where you know, they get dealt with. But other than that, I, I, there's not a problem we with... Went, we went all last Premier League season. I can recall one incident yeah. with, with the Leicester, City, Leicester City's then manager. Yeah. One incident in how many games? Yeah. In a full season? No I'll tell you what, that's infinitely better than it was ten years ago. <laughs> Talking about... Getting clarity, sometimes it doesn't matter how long it takes. Now, Keith Stroud, uh, back in the Premier League, Keith Hackett in his blog on You Are The Ref said that, you know, it's one of his regrets that Keith was removed during his time as, uh, as general manager. He was back in the uh, Crystal Palace victory, two goals to one against Aston Villa, and Palace netted through MacArthur. Uh, it was a disallowed eventually for offside, Peter Kirkup was involved. It took a while, it took a while. Mm. It, 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 it looked untidy, it took a long time. However, they got the decision correct in the end. And, and you know, I've always worked on the belief, better to take a long time to get a decision correct than, than get a, take a short while to get, make an incorrect one. Because they're game-changing decisions, those. Mm. And what the, what the referees can walk off, very proud of, is their performance has not affected the outcome of the game. And ultimately, that's what we all try to do when we step over the and, white line. Uh, and it, it would have been easy for, for Keith Stroud, he's given the goal just to thought, right, OK, the flag's not gone up, let's, yeah, get, yeah. let's get back. But yeah. obviously, they, they knew something wasn't right because the Aston Villa players, quite rightly, going up to referee. They've not been surrounding him, so they shouldn't get penalised for surrounding him because they're, they're making a genuine inquiry. And it takes a, you know, a brave referee to go across, speak to the assistant. Obviously, he said, look, he's in an offside position, not sure if he's hit him, and he said... He's got a great position. That's it. I'd like to have seen that happened on Monday night with um, with Craig Pawson. But going on, going on to Keith, you know, Keith's finished up the top echelons of the football league now for many last three, four, five seasons. Okay, so I'd like to ask the question: Why has he not been promoted back to the back to the Premier League? Because he's an out, he's a, he's an excellent referee at that level, and I think he's he'd make an excellent referee for for the select group. I was on when when he got removed, and for for my opinion, he shouldn't have been removed. I know Keith, Keith has come out and said he regrets him being removed, but I think Keith had one arm behind his back at the time because there was a lot of pressure. There was a lot, you know, making, I think it was him and Steve Tanner, there was a lot of errors going on with the, new, with the new referees. I just felt that he could have been managed better by the select group manager, Kieran Barrett, who I felt that sort of let Keith down a bit. Um, I, th I think he definitely let him down because he didn't manage him correctly, he didn't give him the right games, didn't give him the help and support that he, he required. So I, I think that he was removed unjustly, but it's great to see him back and I think he should be given more games. The, the, que the question I'd like to hear answered is, is there a will to see Keith back on the, on the select group list? Yeah. It, that's the question yeah. for me. Um, there is nothing wrong with the management deciding we're going to have the lad back. Goodness me, how many footballers see, are dropped for a game or so but, um, and then come back yeah, better? That's right, but, it, I mean, great credit to Keith, the way he's been, he got, he got sacked from the select group as a professional referee and gone back to the Football League and, and, and get his eye down and his performances have been fantastic. But why, sorry, but why, why, sorry, just quickly, just why promote, why promote, you know, a 47, 40-year-old back onto the select group? 
and, and, and not keeps not drive, who, who's always up there every year. Alan Pardew, well done. He said it was a great call, even though his yeah. team were denied a goal. And maybe, I know Mark has said in this studio, we can't go into it on air, but he feels Brendan Rodgers should have uh, had the grace to do the same uh, with the Liverpool-Bournemouth uh, yeah, uh, goal. That, right, about this, finally, get your questions in to youaretheref.com for the panel here. The best question that we get set will be a winner. And the winner of a shirt signed by Premier League referees. That's a, a great prize. Get your questions in to youaretheref.com. And as I say, there is a great prize for the winner. In the meantime, thanks to Mark, thanks to Glenn, and we'll see you. Thank you to you. We'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>